Good afternoon. Welcome to the Living Mosaic, a project of the Spark of Humanity Network. My name is Martha Holden, and I'm a member of the Spark of Humanity Network. The Living Mosaic series is based on the conviction, yeah, conviction, hope, belief, that there is a solution to the current world distress, all facets of it, and that that solution may be envisioned as a living mosaic of which we are each a unique and essential bit, part. Now, there are people who say, nah, I don't like that. I don't like that. The, you know, the idea that there's something, somebody putting the pieces in the mosaic. And <clears throat> so that's fine. You know, if that's the way you're feeling, um, come up with a different image and let us know. Send us an email at livingmosaic2024 at gmail.com. We're interested in more, more images, different images. Living Mosaic is what came up, and now it's what we're calling ourselves, but you know, it can be also the multidimensional, ever-evolving dance of which we are each unique energy events. It could be a body. Um, you know, I'm a pancreas cell in a body, or I'm a little pebble in a living mosaic, or I'm a particular f event in this dance. We're not, we're not hung up on what image you like. We're interested in the images that may be working for you. Today, we are going to be talking about, I'm going to be talking about, and hopefully somebody else will show up, but if not, We'll be talking about stamina. That's the subject. Stamina, the ability to keep going. Now, there are times, perhaps, when we all feel our stamina flagging. I certainly feel mine flagging occasionally. And so what do we do? How do we handle that? How do we understand that? I was talking with a friend about this this morning, and she said, so every day think about how my stamina is. And I think, nah, I don't think so. Because if I start thinking about my stamina, particularly early in the day, I'm, I'm likely to think, nah, I'm, it feels pretty low today. I think I'll stay in bed. So that's not helpful. But if I'm feeling like I need more stamina, or there's something I see coming down the road, that I think will call for more stamina. How do I handle that? If I'm, how do I respond to that? In the understanding that I am an essential and unique, as we each are, an essential and unique bit of this living mosaic. We're sticking with that image for now. So how do I? How do I handle it when I'm feeling like I don't have the stamina to do this? The first place I turn is to the reassurances in the Spark literature. That's the Spark of Humanity Network is what's sponsoring this program. And they have little books. And somewhere probably on the website um, are the three reassurances. And the reassurances are that in each one of us, in everyone, in each one of us, there is a spark of humanity. And that as we claim our sparks, we become agents of transformation. And that, as we've talked about in previous shows, that makes us more amenable to be drawn into our place in the mosaic or our place in the dance, where, where we truly belong, where, we're, where we belong, where we need to be, where we are comfortable. We're the only place, actually, where we're truly deeply comfortable is in that right place. And so claiming our sparks is one way we get there, and there's lots of literature and these shows about that. So we claim our sparks, we become agents of transformation. The second reassurance is 
as agents of transformation, all the resources we need are available to us. Not as agents of democracy, not as agents of capitalism, not as agents of pacifism even. As agents of transformation, all the resources we need are available to us. And it works best when we ourselves are willing to be transformed is the third one, but to stay with the all the resources we need are available to us. And a resource we need. I'm not sure whether we need the stamina. Well, we do, but we need to trust that we have the stamina and that we will have the stamina. The stamina actually will be provided us as we are being agents of transformation. It sort of wells up from the earth like a ground mist on the October morning. So it becomes a matter of, as usual, our thought processes, our attitudes, and learning to pay attention to what we are thinking, the stories we tell ourselves. So looking at the stamina, it's how do I clear, how do I, what would help me clear out my stories and my feeling sorry for myself and my tired and aching body or whatever, or emotional, tired and aching heart or tired and aching mind, how do I clear that out to, as I understand myself and move into my function as an agent of transformation? How do I let go of that stuff so that I can truly be an agent of transformation in this world, which is part of our finding our place and being in our place and living and evolving in our place in the living mosaic because the mosaic is alive and evolving so how do we so for me I, you're welcome please think about this for yourselves and see what works for you and let us know send us an email or show up on another show um, for me it's the sense of connection it's recognizing myself as being part of a vast community. It can be as large as the community of all created beings, not necessarily living. All the, the community of all being or the community of all living beings or perhaps even the community of all human beings, but realizing that I am like the fungi under the surface of the woods, like the mycorrhizal network, like that, I am part of something very large and it's very alive and studio lights are hot, as I always know, but I forgot how hot. Um, so excuse the strip, strip non-tease, the non-tease strip here. Um, so recognizing myself as part of that and knowing I'm not alone. And this can take practice. I personally take have some time every morning that I get myself into this, invite myself, allow myself, bring myself into this place where I am connected, I am a part of, I recognize, I experience that being a part of. And I'm sure you can find that for yourself, what works for you. But that for me is where I find the, where the stamina comes from. If I get to that point Let's say it's the mosaic when I'm into my, for the moment, 
I'm in my niche, or at least close enough to my niche in the mosaic, that 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 the undergirding of the mosaic, the medium in which the shells and bits of glass and pebbles and bits of mirror are, that we all are, are in place, moving and evolving, something in that medium like steams up underneath and provides me the stamina I need. The stamina is there. That's, I think, is the point that I need to be remembering, so therefore I'm telling you, because if I tell you, I remember better. <laughs> so thank you for listening. The stamina is there. It's so my job, my hope, is to let go of everything that gets in the way of my being an agent of transformation is one way of look at it, looking at it, or just my gets in my way of being open to the stamina. Of course, the a very effective way of not having the stamina available is by telling myself a story about how I don't have any stamina and I won't have any stamina. And isn't it too bad that I don't have any stamina so I just can't do it? I cannot continue. That, that's a good way to keep the stamina from bubbling up, burgeoning up, steaming up, whatever the stamina does. So to be paying attention, how many thousand times are we talking about this, right? To the thought process and being aware, just being calm enough, being quiet enough inside to be aware of the thoughts and the attitudes and the stories as they come steaming through. And many of them are so fascinating are so comforting and familiar that we want to grab right onto them and carry them, maybe expand them, maybe make them more dramatic, maybe slightly work on how they end up. But it's so easy to get caught up in that ceaseless flow of thoughts, attitudes, drama, stories, imaginings, I mean, I, yeah, I do it all the time. I think that's part of what my, the nighttime dreams are about, that, but to become aware of that, to allow ourselves to still down enough so we are aware of that and we're paying attention. Okay, so what's getting in the way here? What's being negative? Where am I more interested in feeling sorry for myself than I am in being part of recognizing myself as part of this incredibly magnificent, living, dynamic wholeness of which I am a member and of which I am a unique member and which actually, when I let my head turn around and begin to engage in the flow, join in it, choose to participate in it, choose to live into it, to be part of that life, to let that life live through me, then I become closer to being an essential member of that rather than just um, sort of an anomaly or a challenge around which other people have to work which, of course, strengthens them. It, gives, it provides them a spiritual growth opportunity. How kind of me. But you know, rather than being kindly, generous, and I'm being sarcastic, in providing other people opportunities to grow and develop and gain wisdom, I can make the choice to let go of my story, my self-pity, my story, my victimhood. I, the reason I can talk about this is because I'm so well practiced in this and it's so familiar to me. And yours may be slightly different, but you're welcome 
to use this in your life however you can. To be able to let that go because I can tell you that the joy, the fun, the sheer downright fun of joining in this process, joining in the life of the living mosaic or the, the dance or whatever image you like to use, the sheer fun of it is much more fun than being stuck in my victimhood or my self-pity. So I can personally recommend it to you. It's, it's really nice. So we've got quite a bit of time left. I'm going to be quiet. And if you have comments or questions, you're always welcome to email them into us, and I will do my best. Somebody will do their best to respond to them the next time in a future show. And if we're lucky, we'll let you know when the show will be that you, your comment will be addressed. Or you can just beam the comment or question to me now as you're watching this. And never mind time. Time is an illusion. So if you're watching this in, you know, 2027 or 2030, you can just get on through and I'll pick up on it. So I'll be quiet for a couple moments and see what comes through. There's, you probably, many of us were raised in regards to money or time, the idea of scarcity, there's not enough. The scarcity is mindset rather than the abundance or plenty mindset. And that second reassurance that as agents of transformation, all the resources we need are available to us is is a statement along the line of the when we're doing what we're called to be doing, when we're doing what we're created to do, when we're on our path of idiosyncratic joy, deep, true joy, not just self-indulgence, but true, deep comfort and joy, when we're on that path, it shifts the metaphysics. Epigenetics, there's science now that's proving this. It's just wonderful because we've had intuitions of this for millennia. When we're doing, when we're on that path, when we're following that, when we're doing our best, may not be very good for many of us. It rarely is, but it's good enough. So that we see things begin to shift. They, they begin to sort of, they sort of form to support our journey. They, it's, a, it's a very strange and wonderful thing. So there's, because there's plenty of good, there's an abundance of good. There is an abundance of everything we need, including stamina. It's right there waiting for us to open our gates, as it were, to let down the hatches, to uh, to welcome it. That that not to say that we might not need naps, and you know eight to ten or eleven hours of sleep, and good nutritional food, and daily exercise, and all the rest of the stuff we all know about. But it's it's there when we are aligned with the greater purpose, with the higher purpose, with the However we want to say it, when we're aligned with our purpose, when, we're, when we are being agents of transformation. And I'm just going to quickly run through the spark of humanity stuff so to provide the context of that. There's, in everyone, there's a spark of humanity. 
It cannot be extinguished. It cannot be corrupted. It cannot be put out or diminished or polluted. It can be defended. It often is. It can be distorted. It can be baffled. And sometimes all three. And sometimes so much that we're not aware that we have a spark of humanity. But all sparks are made of the same stuff. Sparks have a natural affinity with each other. So when you, through your spark, reach out to connect with and affirm the spark in another, regardless of how baffled or distorted or defended they are, their spark is strengthened. And that changes things. It seems that the strengthened spark acts to erode the defenses, clarify the bafflement, and release the distortions from the inside. So you don't have to talk to them. You don't need to be in the same room with them. You don't need to be in the same time zone with them. It's very good. That is claiming your spark. You cannot claim your spark on your own. You have to connect with and affirm the spark in another. The thing about that exercise is that it also strengthens your spark. And that's where the real grist comes in, I think. My understanding is that as I am reaching out to affect, connect with, and affirm the spark in others, i.e. claiming my spark, to strengthen their sparks, because of course they need healing and they need to be changed and they need to be transformed, because so often I think I don't need any of that. But regardless, when I'm doing that, my spark is being strengthened. So I'm being transformed too. I'm being changed. I'm being healed. I'm being healed. So that's how I'm claiming my spark, and my spark is being strengthened at the same time. And that is how I begin to let go of well, I find it very helpful, anyway, in letting go of those negative thought patterns, which are distortions or defenses or bafflement, generally. Maybe always. I can always put them in one of those three categories, although I generally don't bother ta- trying to. Um, so that's, that begins to let go of my, if I may use the expression, crapola, with which my spark of humanity is layered, it's sort of geological. There's this little bit of light there, there's that spark, and then there's all this geologically accreted layers of crud, defense, bafflement, distortion. And that gets in the way of my experiencing the stamina, which is there for me. But to remember, for me, to remember that I am part of this network. I'm part of this vast, almost microbial sea of community. Then I, then I recognize from that, from knowing I'm not alone in this, that there's this life that is right there to surge up within me and for me. So thank you. And I'm asked to remind you that we're on Facebook. You're welcome to follow us or do whatever one does on Facebook or be our friends on Facebook. I don't know what any of this means, but I absolutely trust the person who suggested to me that that we get on Facebook and let you know that we're there. And so, of course, we like friends, naturally. So thank you very much. And... All the stamina you need, all the resources you need are available to you as an agent of transformation. So, and as you claim your spark, you become an agent of transformation. So all the resources are available to you. Thank you.